Hello everyone, this is Mike Benson with SESU TV and I'm joined by Vincent Ngala, smooth jazz artist, and he's been uh, touring a lot, touring with the new CD, so we're going to have a nice little sit-down interview with him, and Vinny, welcome to Southern. What's up, buddy? Glad to be here. Nice. So uh, how's the tour been going so far? Everything's been going really good. Um, we've been traveling a lot, but we're very excited to be at John Lyman Center tonight for the performing arts. Um, Absolutely beautiful venue, and uh, what's very special about this show tonight is that I have my entire L.A. band with me, and it's not too often I get to play with them on the West Coast. So, um, And this is the first ever Christmas show that we're doing here tonight, and so it's a unique experience for me, um, and we've all came together. We had a great rehearsal last night, and we're just uh, very excited to be bringing this to New Haven tonight. Now, you're playing with Steve Oliver and Greg Karukas. Yes. Um, is this the, the first tour you've played with them or have you uh, played with them before? I've played with them individually before on their various shows and some of them have done mine but this is the first time that the three of us have came together for a package show and especially Christmas. It's not going to be all Christmas, it's going to be some regular music and some Christmas, a little sprinkling of Christmas, you know. But um, Steve Oliver is an incredible uh, guitar player, vocalist, uh, many number ones on Smooth Jazz Radio. And uh, Greg Karukas uh, recently last year won a Grammy, he's a Grammy winner. And uh, it's just, you know, and, and the other thing is I've been, I grew up listening to these guys' music since a very young age. And so it's, uh, it, it means a lot, especially because of that, to be playing with them tonight. I never dreamed that I'd be playing with these guys, you know, someday. And, uh, but now, uh, besides them being incredible musicians, they're just, they're also great guys, too, with huge hearts. Drummer, too, uh, Dave Hooper, L.A. veteran drummer. Daryl Williams, bass player, just an incredible band. Uh, great vibe, great camaraderie amongst all of us, and uh, it's going to be great. Now, if you don't mind me taking you back, uh, taking you back a bit, um, what made you want to be a musician? Well, I've, I never even remember making that decision because music was always such an internal, uh, it was always inside me, you know, and uh, something I always knew that I wanted to do. And I, I could, my, my, my farthest memories, my, I'm sorry, my earliest memories from childhood are... Um, or involve music, you know, banging on the pots and pans when I was three or four years old. Yeah, that's what I tell everybody. My, they, my parents got tired of me banging on the pots and pans, so they brought me a little baby drum kit, you know. <laughs> there was like a, a domino effect from there. You know, I went on to the guitar and uh, the keyboards as well. And sax came last in fifth grade. We, we were asked to pick a woodwind or a brass instrument. And you, you couldn't do like a run-of-the-mill, you know, uh, drums or guitar, and, you know, so loud and everybody playing that. But, so I picked the sax. And I kind of found my voice on the sax a couple years later, and especially the tenor sax, I knew that I wanted to play that. So it's, uh, it's been an incredible experience so far, you know. And, I, and I, it's, it, I get bored on one instrument, so I switch off onto another. So it's this never-ending um, quest to just, I just love all types of music. I love all genres, love all instruments. I just absorb as much of it as I can, really. Now, you went straight into your career in music right after high school, and your junior year you put out first CD, North and Soul, That's right. um, and then in 2012, yes. you put out, uh, uh, I got this, you put oh, out, good Google this afternoon, no, 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 <laughs> I remember, come on, dude, <laughs> um, you put out in 2012, Can't Stop Me Now, mm -hmm. and then recently you just put out Coast to Coast, explain yeah. the process, you know, comparing, putting, uh, putting those CDs together, and working on them, you know, also being your own producer as well. Well, I've always, uh, always self-produced all my albums since a young age. I've played all the instruments on them. And, um, you know, I, I have the sound in my head. I know exactly what I want. And so I have the means of getting those sounds. So I've, that's why I've always, you know, done all the albums myself. You know, not, not working with a producer. I, I'm very much in control of what I want. I know exactly what I want. And that's, that's always helped me. But um, I start off with layering, usually drum samples, you know, or programming. Or then I'll do bass and... It's just layering instruments on top of one another. And once I establish a groove, you know, like a good drum groove or something's happening, you know, when you're bopping your head, that's a good sign, by the way. Um, then I'll usually come up with a, a melody or a chorus, you know, um, that I will then develop the song. And uh, sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes I hear a melody first in my head, and then the groove will kind of be painted onto that, you know. But everyone has a different way of how they work, you know. That's kind of how I've always done my... Um, all my albums, but what, the funny thing about Coast to Coast is, uh, that's the new album, came out in May of this year, 
It took a slightly different direction this time. I mean, more of the same of, of, of what I've always done musically, but a little more deeper on the R&B side this time, I think. And uh, that meant a lot to me because I just made an album for me. You know, I wasn't trying to think about what would work for radio and what people want here. I just did an album that I wanted to do. I have a very strong R&B influence, you know, uh, growing up with music, funk, soul. I love everything, but I love soul and R&B. And so the album was a lot, you know, uh, a lot more of that, heavily influenced by that, and uh, a lot more horn section stuff going on. And so there's no rules anymore in the music industry. You can make whatever kind of music you, you want to make, you know, and I, that's exactly what I did. And thank God uh, it's been perceived very well, and uh, it spawned two number one hits off the album. And we just found out this past week that the, the, the second single, When I'm With You, went to number one on Billboard. So that's an incredible, incredible feeling. So, Did you ever see that happening? No, you never dreamed that. I, when, I, when I first made my first album, I never dreamed that, um, I never dreamed that, it, you know, pe sorry, I keep hitting your arm there. <laughs> I never dreamed that people would, uh, you know, I, I released that first album for, for the locals. I was playing out in the restaurants and clubs all through high school, you know. And I never really intended to make it for, like, a big picture thing, like selling all over the world. And unbeknownst to me, one day, I got a couple calls and emails. People were playing the album all over the world. And um, it just blew my mind. And so, you know, you go down the, fast forward a little bit. I would hook up with a radio promoter, and you, you learn the business quick. You meet all the people, and, you know, a lot, a lot happened very quickly. And the fans were uh, gracious enough to let me make a second album, man. That's can't stop. It's like a, the titles are a progression. It's like... North End Soul, okay, first album. Now the second album, Can't Stop Now, got to keep the momentum going. And third album, Coast to Coast, really symbolized uh, my move to the West Coast. All of last year, I, I lived out in Los Angeles. And it was a big, big step in my life. One, probably one of the biggest things I've ever done. And uh, it was rough at first, you know, there's, and there's always a certain amount of challenges in life. But you overcome them, and you come out a, a much better person. You learn a lot, and it makes you man. <laughs> You know, and so that's why Coast to Coast was the title of that. And it, it, it's, it, all these albums are very reflective of what was going on in my life at the time. The next album will be reflective about what, whatever state I'm in, in the music business or, or life, you know. Now, for your sets, you have the three, uh, three CDs out, mm -hmm. and you also um, are doing Christmas songs tonight. Um, how do you plan, you know, your setup? For this show tonight? Or in general, too. Well, I generally have a set list that I stick by. You know, I, it's a it's a it's a good it's a good mixture of um, songs from my albums, maybe some that were hits on the radio, a couple just a very few obscure ones. You know, a couple ballads, and then a certain amount of covers because people relate really like to stuff that they know. You know, covers especially of Christmas music. This show is a little different. It's not going to be all Christmas. It's going to be like a little spring. I said that already. Sprinkling of Christmas, <laughs> but anyhow, I'm repeating myself now. But anyhow. Um, you know, holiday music is so good because everybody can relate to that. Everybody loves Christmas music. Whatever, whether it's singing or instrumental, people can relate to it. So it's a beautiful thing. And um, that, was a, that was very, it was very easy to put together this show. You mix a couple of Christmas songs, mix a couple of hits. And between Steve Oliver, Greg Ruggs, and me, we have, we've all had songs on the radio. So there's really not going to be any dull moment tonight. Everyone is going to know the material. It should be a very exciting, very exciting show, very exciting time. So... Uh, going forward, uh, do you have any plans, shows, tours coming up after uh, the show? Well, I'm off a little bit after this for the holidays, and then I fly out to Los Angeles uh, on New Year's, playing at the Spagatini in Seal Beach on New Year's Eve. We're doing two shows. Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, January 8th, then I'm in Vegas on the 23rd. And then usually around March, the festival season starts, and I'm going to be at the Sea Breeze Jazz Festival in Panama City, Florida in April. Uh, the Cancun Jazz Festival later in September. Uh, I'm, I'm missing a lot of stuff, like my, my memory right now at the moment, folks. But the festival season is great because that's where there's like 30,000 smooth jazz fans at once, and big exposure, and uh, those are great, but they could get a little, um, there's so many bands going on, you know, during the day, you can't necessarily get the sound right, whereas a venue like this tonight, we have the place for ourselves. It's the acoustics are controlled, that's inside, so we love playing intimate venues, especially ones as intimate as John Lyman Center because they have uh, the the design of the theater is so beautiful. I mean, you have the, the the stage comes out like in a half round, and the people are right on you. So it's very intimate, but at the same time, and, and there's not a bad seat in the house. Not there's not a bad seat in John Lyman. So we're we're very thrilled to be here. Now, for uh, people watching this interview and they're interested in buying and or listening to your music, where would you direct them? Uh, well, absolutely, my music is found on uh, all the major outlets. You know, iTunes, 
uh, CDs, physical CDs, if you buy them anymore, everyone downloads, can be bought off Amazon.com, CD Baby, or directly through my website, VincentNGala.com. Uh, and that's, there's a complete uh, tour schedule page on there. You can see where I'm playing. And uh, I encourage everybody to go on uh, Facebook, Instagram, say hi. I'm very active on those pages, and uh, it's great. See all my latest happenings, and it's all good. Thank you so much, and uh, have fun tonight up there. Right. Great spending some time with you. Thank you Definitely. very much. Appreciate it.